All right, everybody, back to Let's Get On With It Shadowrun. Last episode, I took you all through a tour of the Redmond Barrens, introduced you all to all the sites, allowed you to absorb some of the scenery of the area and the place. In this episode, uh, which is going to be entirely a skippable lot, in fact, I advise you if you're not interested in looking at me doing a bunch of shadow runs for Gunderson, you might just want to let this one go. Because that's what I'm going to be doing in this episode. I do have some objectives. Um, I'm going to have to earn, I would say, 700 million. 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 I should have looked that up. God damn it. <laughs> Whatever. It's been like four or five hours since I recorded and uploaded the first episode. I got some positive feedback of people like saying, cool, want to see some more of this? I thought yeah, Paul T.D. Grade, who had mentioned the Shadowrun system before, would enjoy this. I think he was a little misled whenever he heard about Action RPG, and uh, he learned something. <laughs> um, this game, I would go so far as to say, is this is my favorite game for the Sega Genesis. I've, um, I believe I've played this game uh, more than I have any other Sega Genesis game. It's difficult for me to claim a favorite game for the Super Nintendo, because there's been so many games that I've played and so many I've enjoyed. The Sega Genesis, hands down. This is the game I played the most, and the game I enjoyed the most. By the way, here are some more Halloweeners. As you can see, they're significantly easier for me to handle now that I put one more point into quickness. Uh, you know, the point of intelligence, I'm sure, helps too. And, um, got the Predator Heavy Pistol. If I hadn't bought that and just kept the Wheat Pistol, I would have had enough money for what I want to do next. But I didn't. So I'm going to have to save up again. Though not too much if I keep running into random encounters like that. Um, like I said, I think I might have said I'm after 700 cash. Uh, that will get me what I want to do next. It'll be pretty cool whenever I get 700 in cash. I'll be taking a field trip to show you guys uh, a different area of the game. And introduce you guys to a shadow runner who will become a part of my permanent team. Um, but more on that later. For now... Weenies! Die. Much harder to kill those guys at the beginning of the game, actually, with the Gator Shaman. Not only does he move as slow as Molasses, if I recall correctly, but, I mean, his combat skills are absolute jack squat. The best thing he has is his magic, and at the beginning of the game, that's neither strong nor reliable. Alright, I forgot my, uh, the ways and the methods in which I was supposed to go. Um... Also got some feedback from the second video, basically going like, You need to show off this stuff, become epic, cool, powerful, and Plump Hell Punk, for example, whose videos uh, I've watched and enjoy. Some of them, <laughs> I, I haven't watched all of his videos. I make no claim to that. <laughs> um, has uh, mentioned, I'd really like to see that. So, you know, people who like to see that stuff, that's why I like to give the option to watch all this stuff. Like I had for, like, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4 stuff. That's why I didn't skip through all the slog. Because sometimes people really like to watch all the uh, interior bits and pieces with uh, minimal skipping. Eh, so, you know, if I just put it in separate videos, it allows for free-forming convenience and stuff. Sounds good, right? I'm still not doing ghouls, though. <laughs> you can go fuck yourself. Jackal's Lantern, Hollywood Correctional Facility, I can certainly manage that. Whee! See, Jackal's Lantern is next door. Really, guys, uh, it really helps in this game for you to learn the locations as quickly as possible. If you're a newbie to the game, just walking around places for the first time, don't know where jack shit is, it's kind of hard for you to do these runs quickly. Which means it's kind of hard for you to collect karma and money quickly. And, you know, I'm not getting much from Gunderson, okay? My negotiation skills jack shit. How many clips do I have? Five, that's good. Just making sure. Just checking. Because it would be unfortuitous for me to run out of clips while in the middle of mortar combat. You can carry a maximum of 20 unless you decide to raffle skate. Uh, there's a way around that. But I'm not going to do that. That would be like gaming the system or some shit. Halloweeners, jump house, I hate those ones. Uh, sometimes, you know, I skip the, uh, the jobs that are like so far away because the Halloweeners is all the way on the other side of the map. 
on the bright side, I get to go back to the jump house, and I get to kill that guy. And he drops something. I think more money. Mo money, mo cash, mo now. I approve of those shenanigans. Whee! You know, the 15 uh, bullet clip is very economical. One of the many reasons why I enjoy the, uh, the Predator heavy pistol. I think it's a heavy pistol. Yeah, over the Warhawk. Something I did not showcase, by the way, or explain, is this whole posture setting. You can see it's an influence it has on your attack and defense ratings. Now, the higher attack you have, the better it is whenever you attack. The higher defense you have, the better it is whenever you're defending. You can adjust those sliders as you see fit if you don't think you're doing enough damage. And if you want to protect yourself better. The posture setting has a different effect upon um, upon uh, NPC shadow runners that you have uh, with you. Oh god! One of them actually has a gun. This was actually the bad spawn with pain. Eventually he runs out of bullets if you escape him. In which case, I'm very glad I have the... I invested Karma there. To, um... He's a terrible shot, jeez. But I'm very glad I, 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 I invested the Karma there when I did to increase my quickness and intelligence. Otherwise, that likely would have downed me. Oh, lost my train of thought. Something about going so far across the map... Uh, postures, right, um, Shadowrunners, the NPCs, um, the, the way you set their posture determines, uh, how helpful they will be in battle. Full defense has a tendency to get them, to have them not help you in battle, because they'll be too busy protecting themselves. I like to jack them with the full offense, so they get in there and slug it out. Forces greenhouse, because it's better for them to go down than for you to go down. <laughs> not gonna lie. If they go down and you can't fix them up, well, you'll just have to rehire them. If you go down and they can't fix you up, well, you get to be transported to the Seattle General Hospital by the trauma team, and they take quite a bit of cash. Unless you know you, like, full-time hired a very expensive Shadow Runner. Then, you know, really, it, it all depends. This random encounter again, not going to showcase that if it's Lone Star, and I tried to fight him off <laughs> and resist arrest. Oh my god. Pretty sure Lone Star would kick my ass right now. Whee! Do, 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 do. Oh shit, more combat. Damn! You guys really want me to showcase this combat feature? Holy shit. Why didn't you guys drop any valuable loot? God damn it. Do, 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 do. Rat's Nest, Little Chiba. 35? Yuck. Whatevs. I'm doing it for the karmas. And for the 700 cash. That's pretty useful, too. How close are we to that target? I'll find out after I kill this dude. <laughs> 615. That's almost good enough. I'm factoring in, um... The price of the taxi. Again? No. And the price to get into a place, a club. It'll cost money to get in there. So, um, that is what I'm doing in my brain. So I think 700 safe. Plus, I don't remember exactly how much money I'll be spending to hire this Shadow Runner. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but 700 should be good enough. I hope. And if not, well, then, you know, I can always, like, uh, stay at a motel. Which will cost money, but I can increase my charisma. That'll make things better. In fact, that is something I can consider before I go, but I don't think charisma is an important stat to spend your, uh, your karma on at the beginning of the game. She wastes nuclear plants, Stoker's Coffin Motel, 60 for that. I approve. That's like a stone's throw away. Hells yes. Do do die. There is perfect justification for my character doing that. He's angry. <laughs> oh, good times. I don't even know his name, but I killed him anyway. Snuffed out his life force. Welcome to the snuff playlist. 24-7 snuff. Woohoo! 
Thanks for the escort. You're damn welcome, sir. You are damn welcome. 720 should be good. Uh, how much karma do I have? 12. Hmm. Thinking. I guess I could pump charisma. I want to stay away from pumping uh, my attributes to maximum 6. At least body quickness and strength. Uh, the reason for that is um, cyber uh, wear, uh, some of the cyber wear that I'm going to be getting increases like your maximum cap. Like with, uh, you could get something that improves your strength. So you'll have like a 4 and then cyber wear, C5. But if you're already maxed at 6, I think there's a bug in the game which doesn't uh, affect it properly. So you won't actually get any benefit from the cyber wear. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I could be mistaken. I just don't think I am. So, if anything, I'll probably stick to improving intelligence. You know, willpower for combat success helps as well. And, um, firearms is pretty expensive to improve right now. I may have... Oh, shit, I may have great charisma then. Fuck it. What ifs? Or negotiation. Well, shit. Fuck it. We have the, uh, we have the technology. Son of a bitch. Welcome to another fight. Some of these buildings have random encounters sometimes. About, uh, you know, it warns you whenever you approach the building about dregs and what have you. Some of those dregs leap from the shadows. And you have an attack. And this is a pistol spawn. I am, uh, very happy that, uh, this did not pop up back when I moved as fucking slow as molasses. Otherwise, would have had a serious problem dealing with these dudes. Now, not so much. The pistol guy is here. And I can quickly press my button and deal with him. How much money did that give me? 770? That was a gain of 50 cash? I can use that to buy some more clips. While I'm uh, in the Ares weapon and port... Actually, hold on. First... I will look for a place to crash. Easy money, chummer. I'll pay. Increase charisma. And, uh, no, I'm not able to increase that. I'm a point short. Damn. Not able to actually increase anything unless it was something from 0 to 1. And there's nothing here that I want to increase from 0 to 1. Computer, not suitable. Electronics, not suitable for him either. And. I'm a point shy of increasing intelligence. So charisma bumped up by three points will be good there. I'm checking out. Didn't get a chance to improve my negotiation there. I guess I could have worked for one more karma point. Oh well, no take backsies. Now that I'm here, I'm going to sell my scatter grenades. Grenades are more trouble than what they're worth. From my personal experiences, so I tend not to use them. I'm going to buy some clips for my gun now. One more clip. That way, make sure that I, if I get into a long, drawn-out battle, I can handle myself nicely. Now it's time to head off to the Rinraku Ecology. Uh, now, Ecologies, uh, for those of you who don't know, I mean, <laughs> I first saw them, I think, in, like, SimCity 2000. There are some other games as well. Caves of Cud. Um, but here in the, um... The Shadowrun universe, they're basically controlled by massive mega corporations. Mega corporations uh, in this cyberpunk universe have actually dominated the planet Earth as we know it. And they've done quite a bit to influence laws in their favor. And uh, it's a really uh, sleazy, uh, terrible place because of that. And that's why you have lots of illicit activity going on in the form of Shadowrunners. I could go more in depth about that, but you know, we're kind of playing an action RPG right now. I'm a bit busy. The, there's a whole pen and paper RPG series for uh, Shadowrun. You can look up information on your own time. For me, I'm here at the Frag Grenade. It's Rimraku's attempt at counterculture. This is the place Rimraku employees go to blow off steam. As a result, things can get rough in here. Yeah, in Arcology, uh, in this case the Rimraku Arcology, it houses the entire staff and employees of the office building, which works here in like the Seattle area, or whatever the fuck. There we go. In fact, a fight is happening right now. Great. Wonderful. I can showcase this off, too. So, I think this is a 
a weenie, an i-fiver, the guy with the gun, and an orc. Who hurts, by the way? Again, it's a good thing that I have additional quickness and that I have the Predator Pistol so I can outrun these guys and attempt to kill them. Oh god! Orc! Fucking son of a bitch! I had to use my entire med kit there. Damn! Increased defense up there. That, that actually upsets me. You can sell those things for full value even though there's only one use left. The fact that I had to invest all of that pieces. I guess I didn't have to, but I wanted to play safe and secure, so I'm not gonna dance along these giant escalators here. Fucking fuck you, orc. Son of a bitch! <sighs> fuck you! Goddamn hiding behind pillars and bullshit. Rage! Now, you can't outrun these guys and ditch them. Jesus. But then, you're fucking like you'd end up getting lured into another fight at the bar, courtesy of the random number generator. And then you'd have to deal with all sorts of bullshit. Which is not fun. Rest assured, children. Not fun. Fuck you. God damn it. Fucking hate orcs. Urgh, you're always trolling me, orcs. No matter where I go in RPGs, there you are. Fucking burning villages, pillaging loot. Son of a bitch. Good thing I bought those extra clips. That's all I got to say. Good thing! Son of a bitch! Oh, it's gotta be one shot left, right? One shot? Get away from me, bro! Glad these escalators are around here. The uh, AI does not seem to run that well. I just, fuck it. Now I'm angry. Had to burn my med kit. You can't escape from me. They're escaping from me. You're not supposed to do that. Give me your money. Med kit would have been worth a hundred cash to sell. You gave me a clip. That kind of makes up for it. <laughs> How many clips do I have now? Hey, maybe he gave me more than one clip, which would be awesome. <sighs> I don't have any more medkit things left. Shit. Shit on my pants. Get me in this place. Thank you. 25 cash to get in. Fucking cover charge. Alright, that's definitely enough money. Fucking hell, the medkit thing's gonna aggravate me for a little bit, folks. But point of fact is we've made it. By the way, same thing as in the uh, the Jackal's Lantern, old man. Now this guy is the guy we are after. A wired elf gives you the once over. Yeah, he's an elf. It's okay. I still think he's cool, which is amazing. You want some? No. <laughs> What's your story? Uh, can I ask you some questions? Uh, I'm well connected and so are my friends. What's your story, Chummer? I've been shooting the Matrix for a bit. My name is Phantom. Heard of me? I've been making a name for myself in the Matrix. I worked for a company who trained me in cyberspace. Then one of those anti-meta-human -meta -meta groups showed up, screaming about purity, and then losing jobs and garbage like that. There's quite a bit of racism in the Shadowrun universe. Whenever the event happened in which elves and dwarves started being born or in turning, like just, just springing up into people, what have you, uh... Lots of humans got angry about that, because, uh, you know, elves and dwarves are more capable in aspects and areas than uh, humans are. Before I knew it, I was out. No pension, no severance, just a pink slip. But I showed them. I took my share from their system accounts. But I'm ready to do some serious damage to those high-minded breeders. No offense, of course. Breeders is a derogatory term aimed at humans. Need some questions answered. First, we'll ask, we'll ask this question. How is it that you are an elf? They called it the goblinization. It happened about 30 years ago, when one in ten humans suddenly metamorphosed into two of the metahuman races, orcs and trolls. Elves and dwarves were born of human parents about 40 years ago when the magic itself first returned. The elves were one of the races that created their own nations and grouped into tribes. They created a tight-knit family, one that excluded many outsiders, but most of that you can find in the history books. Tell me about the Matrix. 
Most people go after the data stores, because that's where the quick million is. The systems are much more than data store dumps. The systems have vast connections, great influence. Security cameras, alerts, and elevators can be controlled inside the system. If you want to go somewhere restricted, go into the Matrix, jack into their system, and find the slave nodes. Alright! <laughs> or better yet, crash the system's CPU. We're gonna get some cyberdeck equipment. There are a few cyberdeck stores around. There's one called Microtronics here in the Arcology. They sell decent decks. The other's in the Pueblo Barrens, inside the Crime Mall. But the stuff they sell is mostly hot and costs a bundle. This guy, if you haven't figured it out, is a decker. Now, now you can argue about uh, having a decker as a permanent member of your team. It reduces the overall combat effectiveness. It's not as powerful. You don't need a Matrix Runner when you get into the upper echelon parts of the quest line. Because at the end, it's not going to fucking matter. <laughs> you mainly hire these guys for short term. And uh, that's one arguing reason why you can just not have one with you at all. And uh, certainly if you're going to hire a guy, Phantom's like mid-tier. He is not the worst decker that Shadowrunner that you can find, but he's also not the best. However, because of his attitude, the fact that he has some customizable, you know, customization to him, like I, all I need to do is put some karma in him and I can spend my points as he pleases, and he's not that expensive, he's easy to get to compared to the other decker. Um, I just like his attitude, like the, uh, the, the coat he has, the hat and everything, despite the fact he's an elf. By the way, the most powerful decker in this game as a Shadowrunner, also an elf. She's a female, too, so not really losing out here. So we're gonna bring along this guy on the short term, as soon as I press the right button. I hope it's a Matrix run we're discussing. I charge 540 for a single run. But if you can cough up 5,400, my services are at your disposal. Of course, either way, I get my percentages. I just need someone for the short term. What do you say? You got me, pal. No regrets, you'll see. Now we have Phantom on the team. I can control him individually as I would anybody else, like Joshua. But I'll leave him to the AI. He's got an SMG as a weapon with a laser scope. Damage is negligible, and the power is light, so that's nothing to really worry about. I'm actually going to want to get him something like a Predator Pistol, since that's primarily what he's good at. Actually, that might be... that's a pistol, not an SMG. My bad. So, g getting him a Predator Heavy Pistol, good choice. He also has some cyberware already. He has some essence to spend. What does he have? A Data Jack, Hand Razors, and Wire Reflexes. Wire reflexes, by the way, I think they'd run you about 20,000. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that in mind, folks. Keep that in mind. Hand raisers, that's good. I think the uh, the other, the upper echelon decker has cyberware upgrades that I didn't much care for. I don't know, it's been a while since I've hired her, so I never bothered to check or care. Here are his skill levels. Um, pistols, that's what he's most advanced in. This has uh, some minor electronic skill, good computer skill, which is what you really need to worry about whenever you are in the Matrix. That's the primary skill use there. And I'll look forward to showing that off a bit later, like in the next episode. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. We've got our buddy here that we're going to build up Karma alongside, just doing simple runs for Gunderson. And together, we will become a force with which to reckon. I have another slot there for a party member, but that one's going to be left blank. There is uh, somebody special later on in the game that I'm saving that for. Don't want to ruin it by having anybody else there. So that takes care of this episode, folks. I'll see you all next time. Grimmoth out.